It's good to see everybody this morning. The sun came out. We're going to get started here. So my name is Megan Mitchell. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> and I joined the San Francisco Bicycle Coalition Board of Directors because I believed in the organization's mission to advocate for transforming the city streets and neighborhoods into safe and livable spaces by promoting bicycles for everyday transportation. Now, honestly, when I was asked to MC this rally, I wasn't sure about it because I felt like I didn't belong up here. I'm used to attending these rallies where we talk about the importance of bike lanes and car-free streets and livable spaces, but they're led by people who don't look like me. And it's rare to see people of color leading these types of conversations. I live in the southeast part of this of the San Francisco the Bayview District, a neighborhood that hasn't been prioritized in our mission. And some of you are from other neighborhoods where people of color live and work and try to safely navigate their streets, like the Fillmore District, OMI, and even Chinatown. And throughout my time as a board member, the San Francisco Bicycle Coalition has made some steps to engage with people of color from these communities, but we were widely told by our predominantly white membership to just focus on bikes. It's disheartening to be dismissed. However, one thing I want people of color to know and remember is that these streets belong to us too. These bike lanes, parks, and other livable spaces belong to us, and bike to Anywhere day, everywhere day, is also our day. And as we continue to advocate for all these things, my commitment as the first black female board member of this 50-year-old organization is to ensure that people of color, who by the grace of God still have the ability to live in this city, are part of these conversations and these plans and are at the table to help lead the work to transform the city and make it livable for everybody. Now, we have some great speakers today from city officials to community members <laughs> and leaders, but I'd like to kick it off by welcoming someone who understands all of these issues, Mayor London Breed. Thank you so much, Megan, for opening up the stage for Bike to wherever day, wherever you're going. Hopefully you're going to work downtown. That's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping the reason why you're not here is because you got to get to work downtown in San Francisco so we can make that money so that we can do more protected bike lanes. And in fact, we've done since I've been mayor, about 41 miles of protected bike lanes in this city and more to come. And I want to just um, express my appreciation to the new community leadership council and the folks who are part of Co Tenderloin and so many of the organizations who were very uh, intentional about outreaching to African American and Latino communities to get more people engaged in Bike to Wherever Day. Uh, they joined us in Fillmore, and in fact, I live in that neighborhood, but I didn't make it to join the group, so my apologies, but I made it here. It was early, it was early in the morning. So I did wanna talk about, because we always talk about what needs to be done, but we don't take a step back to like the bigger picture and what we've already accomplished. The fact is, San Francisco has changed. And this city wants horse and carriage, cable car, new technology around transportation, and freeway-like streets was mostly built for those kinds of transportation modes. And then in comes all of a sudden, and I don't know if it had anything to do with when I went to UC Davis and bikes, and then all of a sudden I come home and people are riding bikes all over the city. There was critical mass and all kinds of things happening in our city with demands for change and the desire to allow for more modes of transportation to ride more efficiently and more safely on the streets of San Francisco. And here we are, still working on that bigger vision. And let's be clear, 
This is not just about one protected bike lane. This is about a transportation network in San Francisco that allows for bikes to move along the city streets safely and efficiently. This is about the ability to allow different modes of transportation so that people who are walking are safe. And we are not trying to get rid of cars. Slow streets does not mean no cars. It means slow down. That's all it means. I would use profanity, but this is a family-friendly event. <laughs> so what have we done? We've installed 33 quick build projects and more than 50 miles of safety improvements on the highest injury streets. And as I said, we built 41 miles of protected bike lanes. We established not only slow streets and shared spaces, but JFK Promenade. <laughs> And isn't that a nice bike ride just through the park and it just feels so good. And we were the first city in California to reduce the speed limit to 20 miles an hour on 45, 44 miles per hour streets. And we're gonna be the first city in the state of California to install speed cameras. So if you get a ticket in the mail and you're like, what did I do? Well, slow down the next time. The point is, again, this is not about removing cars. This is about safety on our streets for everyone. And what more are we going to do? Well, prioritizing daylighting at intersections citywide, expanding no right turn on red at intersections citywide, increasing parking control enforcement to ticket people who park on the sidewalks and block the crosswalk so that not just bikes can't get through, but people who are trying to walk in wheelchairs and others can get through. We have to do this in order to make sure that it isn't an anything goals in our city. So again, we can all use the sidewalks. We can all use the bike lanes. That is the important work that continues to, need to be done. And more importantly, because I was asked this, and I don't want anyone to take credit for what I am trying to do to improve more protected bike lanes in this city. And I was wondering a couple of weeks ago, like why isn't there a protected bike lane right in front of City Hall? And so I was saying to Jeff Tomlin, Je Mr. Tomlin, you're here. Supervisors, you're gonna have to give up your parking spaces because we need, we need some protected bike lanes, at least some sort of safety here. This is a bit too crazy and too dangerous for those who are biking on the streets of San Francisco. And we have the ability, there's two lanes, we can, we can figure it out. So there's more that needs to be done. And the, and the last thing I want to say, because I know a lot of folks are up in arms over Valencia. And, and let's be clear. It's important for us to be fearless in our pursuit to change our streets. And if we don't necessarily get it right, that's okay. There are trade-offs when we have to make these decisions and we're willing to adjust those decisions in order to make sure that we are meeting the needs of all San Franciscans. But I will not give up on my desire to make our city more of an urban environment. We are a densely populated city. We are a city that needs to produce 82,000 units of housing. Do we want all those people driving? No. Do we want all those people crowded on buses so we can smell their armpits when they're holding on? No, we don't. What we want is the ability to have convenient modes of transportation that are safe and efficient in San Francisco. And I will continue to be as aggressive as we have been in pursuing those goals. And I am grateful to the Bicycle Coalition for your advocacy and the work in helping us to get there. Thank you all so much for biking to wherever day today. And now I want to introduce Claire with the Bicycle Coalition. Good morning, everyone, and happy Bike to Wherever Day. This is the first time in over four years that we have had this rally at City Hall, so please give it up for yourselves for waking up early, getting on a bike ride, and ending up here. Thank you so much, Mayor London Breed, 
Thank you to all the community leaders, elected officials, and agency heads that are here today to celebrate the joy and freedom that is biking in our beautiful city. Nothing brings me more happiness than seeing so many black and brown people on bikes, especially those of you who haven't been on a bike in a while and are re-experiencing that joy for the first time in a long time. Uh, many of you know, and for those of you that don't know, I grew up in the Tenderloin where my family and most of my community relied on muni and walking around. As a child, I learned how to ride a bike in a parking lot and didn't have many places to safely ride in my neighborhood. And biking in this city has changed so much since then. I ride along separated bike lanes on Turk and Golden Gate often, while Market Street is mostly free of private cars, but there is so much more to do. The progress we've made towards a city-wide network is incomplete. There are gaps, streets with no protection, and neighborhoods that are completely left out. At the San Francisco Bicycle Coalition, we're motivated by the possibilities for transformation that can emerge from the city's biking and rolling plan. It's the first comprehensive update of the bike plan in 15 years, and the SFMTA is developing it right now. With input from communities across the city and focused engagement led by five amazing community-based organizations, some of whom you will hear from today. The plan can embody the dream of what we want to see this city become. And to truly live out that dream and celebrate an active transportation system that serves everyone in the city from every neighborhood, age, and background, SF Bike believes the final plan must embody these core principles. First, connectivity and convenience that anyone can use the network to reach any neighborhood without gaps or interruptions while the policies and programs make biking and rolling easier than driving. Second, equity and access. We must repair past harms through relationship building, center the voices of those who historically have not had a seat at the table, and move at the speed of trust and ensure that the final plan addresses the many existing barriers to access. And third, safety and belonging. Eliminate conflict between bicycles and motor vehicles everywhere possible. That the network is a welcoming place for all people, no matter their intersecting identities. So with that, we invite everyone here today to work with us to make sure that the biking and rolling plan fulfills this promise. With a visionary plan carried out by focused leaders, we can evolve from bike to wherever day to bike, roll, walk, and take transit everywhere every day. Thank you so much for spending your Thursday morning with us. I'm really looking forward to the speakers that we have lined up for you today. Up next, we have a Supervisor Melgar, who I do not see. Okay, I don't see Supervisor Melgar, but she can speak when she gets here. So up next, we have Director of Transportation, Jeffrey Tumlin, who leads the SF Municipal Transportation Agency. He oversees Muni, parking, traffic engineering, bicycle and pedestrian safety, transportation accessibility, so many things. I'm just gonna give it to Jeff. Thank you so much. Thank you, Claire. My name is Jeff Tumlin and I am your Director of Transportation. It is no secret that in this uh, time in the aftermath of COVID, um, that San Francisco is facing some tough times. Um, but we're San Franciscans. This is nothing new for us. Every 10 to 15 years since 1849, San Francisco has undergone a massive economic and structural change. And every single time we made the transition from uh, bust to the next boom economy, San Franciscans have led. I am so grateful for the leadership of Mayor London Breed and her vision. Of, and I'm so grateful for Mayor London Breed's vision for how to manage this next transition from boom to bust to boom again. Because every time this happens, San Franciscans, the real San Franciscans, those of us who are committed to staying in this city no matter what, we recognize that in order to reinvent the next San Francisco, that we have to draw from San Francisco values. 
we have to draw from the San Francisco brand. And San Francisco's brand is welcoming everyone. Everyone in the city, no matter where they came from, no matter the color of their skin, no matter if they're living in the Bayview or the Sunset or Chinatown or the Western Edition, everyone needs to feel welcome here. And welcome on every street and welcome using no matter what mode of transportation they want to use. San Francisco's brand is also not just functionality. It is not just a convenient parking space at your office. San Francisco's brand, because we are a city, our brand is joy. Yes. Our brand is not only making our streets feel welcoming to everyone, no matter what mode they choose or where they're from. Our brand is making the streets of San Francisco unrelentingly joyful. Joyful for kids who are simply trying to get to school. Joyful for seniors and people with disabilities that want to get to Golden Gate Park or the museum or to their doctor's appointment. <laughs> Joyful for everyone who's ever felt excluded. Any of you, all of us, we've all felt excluded, some of us a lot more than others. What if the people who have felt most excluded in other aspects of their life felt welcome and true joy on the streets of San Francisco? That's our vision. And I'm so grateful to uh, not only the vision of Mayor London Breed, but also the very clear and very long list of directions that she has provided us in order to do the technical work that's necessary in order to implement that vision. I'm grateful to my incredible staff who's working endless hours Yay! to make that vision come true. And I'm particularly grateful to all of the community-based organizations, uh, not just the transportation advocates, but the community advocates who have been our strongest partners to make sure that as we invest in the next round of mobility improvements, that we do it leading from the neighborhood and the community first. And with that, I am proud to introduce um, Eric Rizal, who's the Director of Safe Programs of the Tenderloin Community Benefit District. He is a long-term resident of the Tenderloin, co-chair of the Tenderloin Traffic Safety Task Force, and has ex extensive experience managing various pedestrian and traffic safety programs in the neighborhood. Mr. Rizal, please join us. Thank you, everybody. It's great to be here. I love being around cyclists. It's one of my favorite things to do. Thank you. I, actually, this most consecutive thing I've ever done in my life is bicycling since I was eight years old. So I love it. Um, thank you for being here. I really want to start with some gratitude. I really want to say the Tenderloin really appreciates the fact that we have been able to build a really solid relationship with various community organizations, not only within the Tenderloin, but outside the Tenderloin, especially those neighborhoods that are also struggling with equity issues for years, for decades, forever. And so we're really proud that we've been able to build a really strong relationship with the SFMTA and the city. Thank you, Mayor Breed. And then our um, supervisor, Dean Preston, and our previous supervisor, Matt Haney. We've really gone a long way. We were fortunate whenever we came to the MTA and we said, hey, we are ready, ready for changes. We want our streets to be safe. We want equity to thrive here. We said, throw any and every pilot that you have at us. We're willing to accept it. We want to see our streets safer. Every street in the Tenderloin is part of the high injury network. We have the highest density of children. We have the most people with disabilities, wheelchairs, mobility device users in the city, a large population of seniors. We have a lot of public safety issues and street safety issues. So we're really grateful that we have the opportunity to make some improvements, like the pilot of changing all the speed limit with throughout our whole neighborhood to 20 miles an hour no right on turd throughout the whole community. The Tenderloin was able to pilot those programs. Those have become successful and now being spread out throughout the city and through the state. And we're very proud of that. And we hope that continues to grow, escalate, and we keep to build this deep relationship with the city and other advocates and community members that deeply want to see the streets change and have more access. We need to really focus on 
unfortunately upsetting some people, vehicle drivers, those that demand that they have more parking. The Tenderloin, only 20% of the people actually drive. But every one of our street projects are usually blocked, limited, due to the volume of vehicles that come or just passing through. So without lingering any further, I just want to say thank you. We appreciate our relationship and wish to continue doing that. We know we have some challenges, but we're confident that through the biking and rolling plan, we could be a step closer to achieving our goal of having safe streets for all. So thank you all. Oh, and let me introduce, proudly introduce, Erica Scott from the New Community Leadership Foundation. Thank you so much, Eric. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for having us. Uh, I just want to acknowledge that I used to work for the mayor before she was the mayor. And it was like 2009, and she came to work with a bike helmet and some tennis shoes. And we're like, what's going on? She's like, oh, I rode my bike today. And like I said, this was like 2009. And it was just a shock because it came to me like, oh, we can ride bikes as adults, you know? So it's, there's just so many things that go on in life and you kind of just get in this groove. And oftentimes in lower income and communities of color, the, the struggle and just the every day of just trying to make it, you forget what matters and things like riding bikes like we grew up riding bikes but then like something happens and you just feel like that's not your world anymore so i just want to express my sincere gratitude and mr tomlin will tell you that it hasn't always been such a pleasant relationship with me personally and sfmta honestly but i'm so grateful because what they said they were going to do they're doing they're coming to the communities and they're asking us how can we be involved and and it's so important and i just have to shout out christy thank you so much for your leadership and and her entire team and um you don't think things matter or that you really have a say when you see a stoplight or if you see a bike lane and it seems so distant from your everyday life but when you're actually invited to be a part and ask how does this impact you how does it impact your family then the divide between the bike bicyclists and the community it comes together it's not that we don't like bike riders. It's not like we don't like riding bikes. It's just that we never felt like anybody cared what we thought when things are being changed around us. So we are so happy for these relationships with the community action and the bike rollout plans. And again, just so grateful to be a part. I've been on three community bike rides now. I'm, I look forward to it more and more. And I just want to leave with this. Um, I believe it was like 1998, somewhere around then. My husband now bought me a bike. And it was something was wrong with the seat. And so I took it to a bike shop in the Fillmore, on Fillmore Street. Actually, I think it was on Turk and Fillmore owned and operated by a black man and his assistant was also happened to be a black man. I left my bike there. Every day, about a week later, I come home, my mom would say, they called for you to go pick up your bike. And I never did. So she said, I'll just go get it. She went and picked up my bike. She met the owner of the bike shop. They've been married for 20 years now. <laughs> honestly, honestly. So bikes matter to us, okay? So thank you so much. Happy Bike to Wherever Day. Yes, okay. And now I have the privilege of introducing to you someone who I have seen her journey. Like you say health and wellness, wellness she is the epitome of health and wellness. And she's going to come and talk about her experience with biking and just making health beneficial changes and how she's impacted our community and again there's so many stories that you don't hear about when you're learning about the african-american community and so again we just thank you for this platform and i am so happy to introduce to you Mon monique 
Hi, good morning. My name is Monique L. I mean, um, I'm a community health worker. I've been working in this community for over 25 years. I've been serving um, this community when it comes to health disparities that um, affect our communities, particularly black and brown communities. So when we ride our bikes, I found that there was lots of benefits for riding the bikes. And um, one of the main benefits was riding the bikes was leading by example. Leading by example to fix the health disparities that are impacting our community and realizing that our health conditions that we suffer from, we can easily manage them by riding a bike. You know, um, so, and I was like, when, when do I have time to exercise? Am I ever gonna have time to exercise? So I had this um, story where um, I was invited to be in my girlfriend's wedding like a long time ago, like in the 1990s, like the 1900s. <laughs> and um, her mom had these dresses that we were gonna wear and I needed to tone up really bad. And um, I remember she bust out with this dress and I was like, girl, those are some dream girl dresses. I said, I'm gonna have to get in shape to ride this, um, to wear this to your wedding. You know, I don't wanna make, make you look bad or myself. So what I did is I start my journey to riding my bike to work every day. I committed to riding my bike to work every day, which was seven miles there, because I had worked at Laguna Honda at the time and then I would ride seven miles back. And so I began to look good and I began to be a really good uh, role model for my community. But at the same time of riding my bike, I realized that I needed resources to ride a bike. So um, factoring when we live in an um, urban community, things happen. So my other girlfriend, she was like, well, you know, Monique, you need to get the racer tires, get the racer tires on your bike, because I had the mountain rock tires on my bike. And um, I had to explain to her, girl, I cannot have the racer tires. And she was like, why you can't have the racer tires? I said, because we have to factor in the ghetto glass that I'm gonna roll over and get a flat tire when I come through. So that's the reason why sometimes you see a lot of people riding a rock hopper tire when they supposed to have a speed racing tire. Oh yeah, so trekking is the thing, and you're not a real biker until you know how to true on the bike. Do people still true? You know, you're at the light, you know, you're keeping your balance, you know, get your true on. Um, so I'm learning like all of the language and part of the community, but then when I looked around at the time in the early 19, uh, what was that, 2003, 2004, I realized I was the only black person out there riding a bike at the time. So I really want to thank everyone who is a part of our community now, who has stepped up to ride their bike. But I also want to bring to our consciousness, when you ride a bike in an urban community, <laughs> dodging the bubbles, um, things happen. You are more likely to have your bike ripped off in an urban community or any community in San Francisco. I don't know, San Francisco, your bike and your dog will get stolen. You can't. <laughs> You turn your bike to 5.5 5, 5 seconds, your bike or your dog is stolen. So we got to work on that when it comes to theft around bikes. Um, we want, to, I really would like to see us have more secure areas where we can put our bikes when we're going to our place of business, when we're going to the grocery store, when we're going just to go visit somebody, you know, at home. At home, when you're sleeping at home, you need to know that your bike is secure. You can sleep. I, one time I had took the front tire off my bike, chained up the back tire, and the, the, the horse of the bike, right? When I came back, you know they stole the headset? Now, I mean, it's for real. I mean, this is some real stuff. I mean, my helmet got even stolen. I mean, so we need to have more safer spots where we can put our bikes so we can be more active in the community as well. So there's a lot of challenges to riding a bike when you are part of the urban community. So I just wanted to put my advocacy part in on that end, making sure that everybody is conscious that it's not an easy task when you don't have a bike shop that you can easily go to to get your bike fixed. Um, everybody don't have hundreds of dollars to get simple parts and things like that fixed. So we would like to see more things like bike workshops for children and adults to learn more about riding a bike, more education on riding a bike. Is your bike seat high enough for your leg length when you're pedaling? If your bike is too low that you know you will have, I mean, if your seat is too low that you know you'll have back problems. So those type of things, you know. Um, 
how to properly change your tire if you do have a flat tire, what to do if you're on the side of the road, how to use an emergency patch kit. These are the things that we need to be educated on in order to continue to be healthy bike riders. And thank you so much for your time. Thank you everyone for giving us the opportunity to share. I would like to introduce uh, District Supervisor Matt Dorsey. Um, this man right here, he has dedicated his life to riding a bike. He gave up his car. He rides his bike to work every day. And he is advocating for everyone, um, but he is mostly focused in the District 6 area, which is the Soma, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Soma community, as well as Treasure Island, Mission Bay, as well as the Tenderloin. So we want to, no, not the Tenderloin. Not anymore, not anymore. <laughs> but anyway, we want to welcome Matt Dorsey. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Happy bike to ev anywhere day, everybody. As an urbanist supervisor who doesn't own a car, I will make a commitment right now to give up my parking spot for a bike lane. And I see that's not going over well with my legislative staff, but let's, we can talk about that. You know, San Francisco has some ambitious goals in its climate action plan, and one of them is to reduce our, our uh, well, we have to get to 80% trips that are low emission by 2030. And bicycling has to be a part of that. And yes, as somebody who, as I mentioned, doesn't own a car, most of the trips that I do are bike share. But right now, I want to express some gratitude. I want to say thanks to the Bicycle Coalition. I have worked in this building long enough to see the evolution of bicycle politics, which years ago used to be cars versus bikes. And the work that the Bicycle Coalition has done is really to educate people to understand that the more people who are on bikes, it's better for motorists, it's better for our economy, it's better for the kind of city that we need to be. So thank you for everything that you're doing. I want to give a shout out as well for the bikes that I use, and that's the, our bike share system. Bike share, I think, in many ways changed the math of politics, of bike politics in San Francisco by investing thousands more people in safe bike lanes, in protected bike lanes and infrastructure. That helped to change the math on bicycle politics, which also helped to make our city safer. Um, I want to express gratitude to my colleague, Dean Preston, who is doing work on making sure that if we, when we get to the point where we don't have, you know, maybe, maybe we're not going to have that continued agreement with our bike share system. Are we going to be ready to go with municipalization? I'm going to be on board with that, and I appreciate the leadership of De Dean Preston if that's something that we have to do, because bike share has to be a part of what we're doing as well. And I just want to also say thank you to MTA for understanding that I represent a district that has the most uh, high injury corridor areas, and, and they're responding with wise investments, my colleagues on the Board of Supervisors and the County Transportation Authority that are investing $10 million a year in bicycle infrastructure to keep us safe and to make sure that our city is urbanist and welcoming. And there's a lot of other people to thank. I won't get, get into it, but I do want to introduce our next speaker, and that is Michael Cheatham. A native San Franciscan, Cheatham is program director for SF Skate Club, an organization that creates a positive learning experience for young people to pursue their love of skateboarding in a safe, guided, and supervised environment. Please give it up for Cheatham. Even the ambulance was uh, cheering for me. A fire engine. Um, thank you to uh, Supervisor Dorsey for the kind introduction. Um, I also want to take a moment to thank everyone that's listening to me right now. Um, your attention, thank you for your time, thank you for your energy. All three of those things are incredibly valuable to me, and I just want to remind you that they're valuable if no one has lately. So one more time, thank you guys for just giving me your attention. Um, yeah, like Matt Dorsey just stated, my name is Michael Cheatham. I'm primarily a skateboarder, actually, but I ride my bike at least three times a week. I'm also a regular user of the uh, Bike Share for All program with the Bay Wheels. Um, yeah, and I was asked to speak today about black and brown joy and bicycling and skateboarding. So, joy in biking and skating for people of color is mostly the same 
as it is for anyone. The cool breeze in your face, the means to go further and faster than ever before, it's exhilarating. One of my favorite things about hopping on a bike is how it ignites my childhood. I get on that bike and I feel close to limitless. I can go anywhere I want and I'm not tied down by the expectations of others or the weight of life and my responsibilities. Just dipping and mashing. <laughs> there's a, uh, there's a, uh, I got a little tongue twister. There's a catharticism to it. It's beautiful and it feels great. It's a relief. I feel like this is where the difference lies for black and brown folks. African American children statistically experience the most adverse life events. Life events including a parent's death, a parent serving jail time, exposure to domestic violence, and witnessing violence in their neighborhoods. I need to take a moment to also acknowledge some of the San Francisco specific factors. The unjust murder of Banco Brown the racial slander and demonization of black people in general as a response via San Francisco-based social media, making up less than 7% of the city's population, and even more recently, the racial attacks on Terry Williams, a local at Alamo Square. He's a very kind dog walker where he, yeah, if you guys know about that, put your hands together standing up for Terry Williams. Uh, and if you don't know, he received a package at his home covered with racial slurs, threats like gangster thug and monkey with an in-case photo of him with a noose around his neck last week in Alamo Square. These are all circumstances that our black youth are facing in this tiny little city. Because of this, I feel that biking and skateboarding hold an increased value to black and brown youth for they provide psychological relief. Aside from the cathartic release biking and skateboarding can provide youth within, with community, uh, excuse me, aside from the cathartic relief biking and skateboarding can provide, they can also provide community. One thing about San Francisco that brings me great joy lately is seeing those giant groups of bikers around the city. Those crazy kids with the big wheel bikes popping wheelies for blocks at a time that youthful energy in the city, in the city that's too expensive for kids to even, ha like to even have kids, it's reassuring and it warms my heart. The mission of my youth program, the San Francisco Skate Club, is to use the transformative powers of skateboarding to create the next self-led youth. What that, looked like, what that looks like is using skateboarding as a bridge to connect across differences and to build friendships and understanding between people of diverse backgrounds. Though less intentional, those big wheel biker groups are an opportunity for youth to get some of those same experiences. And the value of them is something that shouldn't be overlooked. To close out, I'd like to list a few things that bring me joy and thank a few people. I feel joy when I ride my skateboard. It's okay to clap too if you guys get down with that. <laughs> I feel joy when I see little brown kids and teenagers smile. Thank you, yeah. thank you, thank you. I see joy when I feel joy when I see anyone smile. I feel joy when my youth at the SF Skate Club use the cooking skills we practice to make burritos for the homeless. I feel joy when my students tell me they understand why college students are calling for a divestment of funds being used for violence. I feel joy when I utilize my Bike Share for All program and get a discounted e-bike. I feel good when I ride my bike. Um, so, for actively creating and nurturing an environment for all youth to have fun, feel safe, 
acknowledged and showcased their abilities in skateboarding, biking, um, for the past however many years, like so many years. I want to give a special thank you to um, Sean Conley, who's uh, half of the founders of SF Skate Club on Divisadero. Shout out to Sean, he's a retired professional skateboarder and now he runs the youth program. I want to give a very, very, very special shout out to the other half of the founders, Twi Nguyen. Um, she recently passed away, however she's colleagues with many of the supervisors up here um, that I'm standing with now. Uh, she's been an advocate for peace and an advocate for um, looking out for the youth. So she's like a big example for me. I want to give a shout out to Larry Redman, a local pro skateboarder. I want to give a shout out to Felix Whittington from San Francisco Rec and Park, the mobile rec department. Another shout out to Valentino Salazar from SF Rec and Park and SF Skate Club. Uh, shout out to the entire staff at the SF Skate Club. I want to give a shout out, I don't know his name, but the one homie that goes around on his bike and drops off Narcan at all hours of the night. Big shout out to him. He's saving lives with his bike. Um, I want to give a shout out to K-Dub, who's a representative in skateboarding and creates opportunities for youth to feel safe in skateboard. I want to give a shout out to Noah and Danon from SF Rec and Park Shred and Butter, to Johnny Roughneck, and a lot more people I might have missed. Um, thank you all for your attention and your time. And if you take anything from this small speech of mine, it's that when you see those kids on those big wheels, um, please acknowledge that, you know, they're statistically a lot of their lives may have pressures that you guys can't comprehend or you might not understand. So though they might bike differently than you, and they might uh, bike a little bit recklessly, or maybe a lot, it's important to understand that they're getting a cathartic release right now. They're getting psychological help. They're getting physical exercise. And they're San Francisco youth enjoying their community. Uh, thank you very much. We have a few speakers left. And I would love if people could keep it a little shorter. I want to make sure everybody gets their time. Um, at this time, I'm going to introduce Jennifer Siswan, a registered nurse who was born and raised in the Tenderloin. Um, come on over, Jennifer. <laughs> Keep it short. Hi, everyone. My name is Jennifer Siswandi, and yeah, I'm from the Tenderloin. And yeah, I decided to become a nurse because I grew up so frustrated by witnessing how our unhealthy environments directly impacts our community health outcomes. And as you know, the Tenderloin is so densely populated with families and elders. There's roughly 60 corner stores and no full access supermarkets still lack of green space, and hazardous living conditions where it's no surprise that the rates of chronic conditions such as diabetes, cancer, heart failure, kidney disease, you name it, are the highest in low-income communities like ours. As there are a lot of important health improvement works going on in my neighborhood and other low-income communities throughout our city, there's still so much work to do. And one thing that I've always encouraged myself, my family members, community members and patients is to increase our physical activity as one factor to improve our health statuses. And biking has always been my escape as someone who grew up in the Tenderloin. Um, as a youth, the first bike I bought in high school was a Fixie, which I quickly learned was a mistake on SF Hills. Um, and as, youth, uh, as a youth, biking allowed me to take deep breathers and decompress in places like Golden Gate Park be around nature for a change, access other neighborhoods around the city that my family couldn't take us to. So I met so many other inner city kids growing up, like Mary Claire, Cheatham, um, who were just like me. And you know, I, I really do think biking. Um, and even till now, biking has tremendously improved my mental and physical health. And it's an activity that can positively impact our health outcomes. Um, and I love to hear from my patients and my community members about what riding their bike means to them and hearing stories of how it has improved their quality of life and their well-being. And I'm so grateful for organizations like the SF Bike Coalition, who helps connect people to free bikes, as well as the SF Skate Club, which is such a positive force to encourage our youth um, to explore the intricacies of our city on wheels, as we all deserve good health and joy. And we all deserve to live in healthy environments. So thank you. Um, so the next person I'll be introducing is District 4 Youth Commissioner Linda Yi, a high school senior who currently serves as a D4 Youth Commissioner on the SF Youth Commission. She is also the chair of Transformative Justice Committee on the Youth Commission and is the youth representative of SF Soda Tax Advisory Committee. Good morning, everyone. Happy back to wherever, wherever day. 
I've been so excited for this day. I've been looking forward to it for a while now. Um, my name is Linda Ye, and I currently serve as the District 4 Youth Commissioner on the San Francisco Youth Commission. It is so lovely to see and feel the community out here today, whether you rode from the Sunset, Golden Gate Park, Embarcadero, Blabo Park, or from other, neighbor or other locations around the city, I'm sure that you have felt the way that biking connects people and neighborhoods. What makes biking so special is that it is not just a clean mode of transportation, which is absolutely necessary in our current times, but it is also a way to practice healthy and active living. I think that in order for everyone to benefit from biking, it must be safe and accessible. This means advocating for policies that promote safe bike infrastructure and encourages bike use in all neighborhoods. When I was younger and I first transitioned from biking on the sidewalks to the road at 13 because it was illegal for me to remain on the sidewalks, I clearly remember the fear and paranoia that I felt while I shared the road with cars and kept my eyes out for drivers who would open, who would suddenly open their doors. Who's felt that? Where, you know, when a driver opens their doors and you have to swerve out of the way. Yeah, it's scary. And this fear has doled over time, but it always comes back whenever a car comes too close. And I'm sure the sentiment is felt across communities. I firmly believe that it shouldn't be this way. I think everyone should be able to feel safe while biking, especially young people. When we discourage biking, we, dispor we disproportionately impact low-income and marginalized communities who must spend more time on public transportation to get to where they need to be and often lack access to physical activity. For me, biking is also a beautiful way to practice self-care and joy. Through it, I can bond with friends and family, take care of my physical health, take care of the environment, and experience personal freedom. I think that we can spread this joy by ensuring equitable access to biking infrastructure. We want to make sure that as many people can partake in the activity of biking. We want biking to feel safe, comfortable, and convenient. We want every youth to have the opportunity to learn how to bike. I want to thank all of those who have worked tirelessly, as you have seen today, to ensure that San Francisco has the beautiful bike lanes and the bike accessibility that we see today. I hope that this work continues as we work together as a community. Thank you all so much. Thank you. All right, and for our final speaker, we're going to have Supervisor Asha Safi of District 11. All right, let's give it up for the Bicycle Coalition today. Thank you for your great organizing. I want to thank Claire for leading our group. It was a phenomenal ride. Claire, the longtime District 11 uh, resident, uh, did a tremendous job. We had probably one of the biggest turnouts. They didn't all make it all the way to City Hall, uh, but they definitely was one of the largest turnouts that I've seen since I've been supervisor. Again, my name is Asha Safai. I, I have to tell you, I, I don't know how many supervisors rode their bike to work or anywhere day, but basically to City Hall today. But I can tell you, one of the things that I enjoyed the most about it is you see the city from a different perspective. You see families dropping off their kids at preschool and school. You see people on their way to work. You see people cleaning up their businesses or opening up their businesses, again, because we're normally riding on the commercial corridors. And yes, bike lanes and commercial corridors can coexist if they're done correctly. And I think we need to recognize that, and we see that when we ride on the way. But one of the things I want to underscore today, because we've heard it, it's a theme. How are we going to get more black and Latino community members to participate and engage and, and, and ride their bike? And I, I, I think of the example of jumping in the bay. How many people have swum in the bay? Okay. I went for the very first time, but I had two experienced people there with me, guiding me and making sure that I wouldn't freeze to death and I wouldn't drown. <laughs> and guess what? There was someone hanging on for their life in the bay because they got hypothermia. The police and the fire came and saved this person's life. So I'm not using it as an exact analogy but if you want more black and Latino community members to ride their bikes, then they need to see more black and Latino community members in positions of power in the SFMTA. They need to be represented. 
They need to have staff there. When you do community outreach, it needs to be rep. And we don't see that. We all talk about diversity, equity, inclusion, and that's not represented. So we need to do a better job as a city. SFMTA needs to do a better job as a city of making sure those positions are filled by community folk. I love hearing from community folk today. I'm glad I went last. I'm glad I got to hear every single thing they had to say because we need to do better. We need to be better about inclusion and truly making sure people feel a part of this network of bike riding. And I'll tell you, when I rode my bike from my house today, there were three times that it was disjointed. There were three times that if I'm not an experienced bike rider, I probably don't make it to City Hall. So we need to make sure that we're being as aggressive as we can to make safe and equitable passageways all over San Francisco. So thank you all. Happy Bike to Wherever today. I think we should go back to calling it Bike to Work Day personally. But anyway, have a great day. Thank you, Supervisor. Before we close up, I just want to thank everyone for attending this rally. You know, it's in my experience in being part of this coalition, it's definitely one of the most different, unique, diverse rallies we've had in a really long time. So thank you, Claire, for putting that together. It's really energizing, it's helpful, you know. Um, we're really connecting all the different communities from all the corners of the city, so that's a great thing. Thank you to our membership. You know, without you, we wouldn't be here, so. And thank you to our current executive director, <laughs> Christopher White. And yeah, everyone have a wonderful day. Thanks so much. Happy Bike to Wherever Day. Happy bike to wherever day. <laughs>